Hey, welcome back. Another day in the two-car garage and uh, more work on Kirk's bug here. Our goal for today is to see if we can't get these uh, door hinges rebuilt. And it should be a pretty straightforward job. I picked up a hinge pin puller and uh, really we just got to get them knocked out, get them measured up, and then we'll order up some new ones. So let's hop over and take a look at some of the tools we're going to be using and then uh, We'll jump back to the car and see if we can get them knocked apart. All right, well here's the uh, puller we're going to be using. I picked this up off of eBay. It's from a company called Double Arrow Fabrications. And uh, it, was, uh, it was fairly inexpensive and I thought I would give it a shot. Now when you get this tool, it actually just comes with a, a grade 8 bolt that's threads into the bottom here and it's got a bit of a point on it to, to drive the pin out. And when I did the passenger side door, uh, I just used it as is, and it, it worked okay. Um, but one thing I noticed is that the, uh, the head of the bolt is really close to the door skin, and it was really hard to get a wrench on there to get things turned. So what I've done here is I modified the tool slightly. Uh, I just simply replaced the bolt um, with a piece of threaded rod and a... a barrel sleeve here that's threaded with a cap screw in the end. That's going to allow me to use a an Allen wrench to turn this so I shouldn't have any worries about hitting the door skin. Now when I did the other side I noticed that uh, the pins are you know they're rusted in and they're really hard to get through. So I also machined up a couple of uh, little helpers here to push through. So we'll get the pin started and then we'll take this little brass insert Put that in there and then that'll push the pin a little further. Once we get most of the way then we've got a longer one to just push it further. So that'll kind of make sense once we get, get going on this here. Let's jump over here and uh, see how this all works. Alright, well the first thing I want to do here uh, before I get started is I do want to do something to protect the paint. Now on this particular car I really don't care about it because it's all going to get stripped off anyway. But it's still good practice just to keep going with that idea of protection. Now one thing to note is I've been spraying the hinges with, uh, with some PB Blaster here, just some penetrating oil, and I've been doing that for about a week. And really every day I just come out, I spray a little bit, heat it up with a torch just to help kind of draw some of that oil in, and uh, just repeating that sometimes two or three times a day, sometimes once a day. Uh, but I really want to have the best shot of getting this out as possible, so it's worth the uh, extra time up front to hopefully make things go a little better. Now for the puller, uh, one thing I did do, uh, I took some of my uh, anti-seize, my silver anti-seize, and put that on the threads just to lubricate that to make things move a little nicer and hopefully take this cheap bolt and make it last a little bit. So really all we do is we just slide this over, Get things lined up on the bottom here. Now we've got to make sure we get it threaded right up on the bottom. All right, so there we go. So now we've got the we've got the driver up inside the hinge. You got to make sure that you get the get the top of this centered over the pin so it'll actually push out. If you have any part of this uh, remover sitting on the pin, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. So just, just be cautious that you get things centered up on the top. So let's, uh, let's get going here. So now we're just going to tighten this guy up. And I can hear paint crunching up in here as the tool starts to press on it. And that's, that's going to be plenty tight. And so now we're just going to take a hammer and we're just going to tap it on the top here and that's going to help kind of shock things loose. So it really just takes a couple of, couple of firm wax. Now we'll see if this will tighten up a little more. Yep. So we'll just tighten that up about a quarter turn and we'll tap it again. See what happens here. All right, 
right, so after a couple of rounds of tapping here, let's see how we're doing. And I don't know if you can see this. I'll try to bring you up close. But the pin is actually starting to move up and out of the hinge now. Uh, so we're moving, we're moving right along. We are at a point though where uh, I don't want to be running the threads of this up inside the hinge, so I'm going to switch over to my little brass driver. This just simply slides up inside the bottom of the hinge here, and it gives me something to push against to drive this the rest of the way out. And now I'm just going to continue on in this manner until I get this, uh, get this all the way out. So let me, uh, let me get this the rest of the way out here and we'll be right back. So there's our pin and uh, yeah, you can see it's coated in that penetrating oil I put on there, but boy, is it, uh, is it rusty. I'm going to go ahead now and uh, remove the bottom hinge and then we'll get this, uh, we'll get the door off and sitting on the bench, we'll take a look at things up close. All right, well we got the door off and just leaning up against the bench here and uh, now we can kind of take a closer look at some things. These are the hinge pins and I don't know if you can see that, but they're uh, pretty worse for wear. Uh, there's a lot of rust inside here and this center section is actually where it pivots. And I can see quite a, quite a bit of wear on there. Now right now, if I try to fit this pin back in the, in the door hinge, it doesn't quite go through. Uh, and that's just because of all the rust that's inside. So I've just got a little, little tube brush here and I'm gonna run that through and just get these hinges cleaned out. Um, both the door hinges and the, the hinges on the car still. And so I just want to scrub all that rust out of there and then I'm going to take some sandpaper and uh, try to clean up some of the rust on this pin. I just want to get things running smooth again. And then from there we can uh, start to measure things up and figure out what size pin we need to order. Well okay, so we've got the hinges uh, as cleaned up as we're going to get them for right now. And then I went ahead and cleaned the pins up and you saw that I just chucked these in my lathe and spun them to kind of polish them up and remove some of this rust. You could do it by hand, it's not a big deal, but I have the lathe sitting right there so I used it. Now I'm not going to go any further on the pins because they are junk and I just wanted to get the major uh, surface rust off of it just so I could make sure that things would pass through. And now on this lower hinge here, I can get the pin in real easy and I can see that this thing is all kinds of wore out. You can tell that it's probably been uh, a long, long time since these were ever oiled, um, if ever. And so they've just, they've really worn out. And all that rust that's inside of it, that's just it acts as an abrasive and it continues to promote more wear. So it's really uh, definitely time to do some rebuilding. So with everything cleaned up, now we can go ahead and start measuring and figuring out what we need. If I take one of the original pins and measure these, uh, you can see that the, the very bottom of the pin and the very top of the pin are clean. And that's because those don't rotate. Those are pressed into the hinge that's mounted to the car. And if I measure that, this should be a stock sized pin and it measures 340. 14 thousandths plus just a little bit. So this is in fact a stock pin. And if I put the non-worn portion in the in the door hinge here, you can see just how much slop is in there. So that tells me that the hole in the hinge is really worn out and the center part of the pin is really worn out. We need to figure out what size pins we want to get. Now Wolfsburg West offers uh, two oversized pins. The first oversized pin is uh, 317 thousandths and then the second oversized pin is 321 thousandths. So we have some options here. In order to figure out what size I need, I'm not worried about the pin because that'll just be whatever it is. It's the hole in the hinge that I need to figure out. So what I've done is I've taken a little piece of brass here and made up a uh, pin gauge. On this side, it is the size of the reamer for the 
first oversized pin, and the reamer is 318 thousandths, so I made it that size. And then the other side, the reamer is 322 thousandths, so that's what I made that. So now what we can do is we can test fit this. We'll start with the smaller side, and that actually just starts to enter this, which tells me that the this hole is right about 318 thousandths. Uh, with all the rust and crap that's still inside, um, if I get all that cleaned out of there, I'm thinking a 318 thousandths reamer uh, is not going to be enough to uh, clean up this hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right to the second oversize, that's the 321 thousandths pin, and we'll use that to ensure that we can clean up the holes in the hinges on all four hinges. And then we know that when we get that all pressed together, we're going to have a really solid door hinge. All right, well, now we know what's going on, and it really looks like the second oversized pin will be our best bet for, the, uh, for all four hinges. Now I'm going to go ahead and get these ordered up, and uh, after I do that, I'm going to run out and get a haircut, and then uh, we'll be right back, and we'll, we'll get to refitting all these things and hopefully making them better than new. So I'll see you in a second. And it's been a week. So we've got our hinge pins, we've got the reamer, and uh, we went ahead and did some prep work on the hinges. And so really, uh, we're ready to keep going on this rebuild. So let me show you what I've done here uh, in anticipation of getting the parts in. What I've done is I just went through and I wire brushed everything just to get the majority of the paint off and most importantly on the, uh, the bearing surfaces, tried to get the rust off of there. Something else you're going to want to note if you're working on something like this, uh, this hinge side that swivels, in this case it's on the door, uh, has a couple of grooves cut in it and those are for lubrication. You need to make sure that these are nice and clean so when we do put things back together we're able to actually get oil in there. All of the slots in all of the hinges were completely full of rust and there was no way you were going to get oil down in there. So I just took a little uh, poker tool here and I went through and I scraped everything out, followed that up with a little jeweler's file and just made sure that all of the heavy scaly rust is out. And really when I look inside there all I see now is just some surface rust. So what we'll do as a finishing step here is I'm just going to uh, put some duct tape on the bottom of the hole here and I'm just going to fill it with some of that crud cutter, that uh, phosphoric acid gel and let that sit for 30 or 45 minutes and just chew up the rest of the surface rust and that that will get us ready then for the reaming process. For the car side of the hinge uh, what I did is I just went through and I uh, used my bench grinder with a wire brush on it and uh, just wire wheeled it to get the majority of the rust off and then I soaked it in some of the Osfo, uh, phosphoric acid that I have and just let that chew up the rest of it. Now you can see there's still a bunch of paint and stuff on here. I'm not worried about that because I am still going to be sandblasting these. So for now it's as clean as it needs to be for the, for the next steps. So before we get to actually reaming things out and looking at all of our new parts here, let me just go ahead and finish cleaning up this hinge and then, uh, and then I'll show you what we got. All right, so now that we've got the hinges all cleaned up as good as we need them to be for the time being, it's really time to go ahead and start reaming things. Now I've got my pins here and this is the second oversize, so this is the largest pin I can get. And I also got a reamer to match it. I got all this stuff from Wolfsburg West and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a you know made in India type reamer, you know, so it's a decent quality, not necessarily the highest quality, but it's more than adequate for what we're uh, doing here. And realistically, if it just gets me through four hinges, then it's uh, paid for. Now to do the reaming here, uh, I am just going to be using my cordless drill and uh, you know I'd like to go ahead and set this up in my mill but I'm going to try to keep this more true to the home garage as possible so we'll use a 
cordless drill. Uh, I'll put it in the low setting because we do want this reamer to run pretty slowly. And then uh, I've got some cutting oil. If you don't have any cutting fluid of any sort, um, WD-40 is better than nothing. You just need to have something in there that's really going to help uh, prolong the life of your reamer. And, uh, and that's it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the body side hinges over to the vise and we'll ream those out while holding that in the vise. And then uh, as far as the door side hinges go, we'll just leave it sitting upright like this and just go ahead and ream them. And uh, that should be all it takes. Let's just hop over to the vise and get this first set taken care of. All right, so I've got the first hinge set up in the vise here. And really all we have to do is uh, make sure we keep this reamer absolutely straight. I want to make sure it stays in line this way as well as this way. I want this top hole to line up uh, with the bottom hole. Now if there is a slight misalignment in the body hinge, it's not really the end of the world because this is the hinge that the pin is pressed into but we still want to be as accurate as we can. So here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to get some cutting fluid in here. Make sure I get my reamer covered here. And again, I've got the, the drill set on low. And now it's just a matter of uh, going for it. Now that I'm all the way through here, I'm just going to brush off all these excess chips here. I'm going to flood this with a little bit more cutting fluid. And now we'll just run this back out. Do a little cleanup here. And let's see how we did. Look at that. Lines right up. So there's our first one. Now we'll go ahead and just get the second one done. All right. Well, now we're just going to go ahead and get the door side hinge taken care of. And for this one, I am going to leave it laying on its side like this. It's just a little easier to get through. That is spot on. Well, there we are. Everything's been reamed out here, and uh, I just went through and spent a couple minutes and cleaned everything up. Um, I sprayed the pieces down with some WD-40 and then just got in there and brushed everything out to make sure that there's no residual chips or anything left in there, both, both hinge sides I did. And uh, really, it's time to check and see how this uh, all works here. Now the reamer is one thousandth of an inch larger than the pin, so that means there should be just a little bit of play in here. And so if I drop this down into the door hinge, and this is what it pivots on, there is just a slight perceptible amount of, of motion in here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, slide the car side hinge on here, and we'll slip the pin in place. 
and now I'm just going to give it one little tap of the hammer here to just make sure that the splines are engaged here. And now that's working just like it should. So we are we are in real good shape. Now I'm going to pull this pin back out. So I'm just going to take a drift punch and put that in the bottom. Take this out. And I am going to spray a little bit of WD-40 down in here. Just as a rust preventative for the time being. Make sure my pin is wet. And again, just a slight tap. I'm going to go ahead and get the lower hinge put back together. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. We'll just slightly tap it in there just to hold it together. And then uh, I'm going to throw it back in the car and I'll show you how we did. All right, well, we got it hung up here, and uh, man, it works really nice. It's nice and smooth. If I try to shake the door, there is no perceptible movement here. It will go throughout the range of travel, nice and smooth. And I've got the door lined up pretty good. It's not perfect, uh, but it's not going to be staying on there, so I'm not too worried about that right now. But uh, I am, uh, I'm pretty happy. This turned out real nice. And all in all, it was a pretty simple job. The hardest part was definitely getting the pins out because they, <laughs> they were pretty stuck in there. Now the, really the last thing that needs to happen here is to press these pins in. And I'm not gonna do that right now because I do wanna take them back apart. I'm gonna sandblast the car side of the hinge and uh, get inside and do some more cleanup. And then I want to prime everything uh, before I actually assemble it. So we're going to leave it here for now. And when I do get around to pressing them in, my plan, at least at the moment, is just to use a, uh, a C-clamp. I'm thinking if I take a uh, just a little four-inch C-clamp here, that will uh, that'll just slip right in place here, and. Uh, should allow me to press this down with some pretty even pressure. So all in all, really not too bad a project. Getting the pins out, that was a chore, but you know that's kind of to be expected because these hinges have never been apart since the day this car was born. You know, once we got them apart, got them cleaned up, and uh, you know, run that reamer through, which went better than I anticipated. I thought I was in for more of a fight on that thing. Um, you know, it was a good couple hours worth of work. And if I would have had the reamer and the pins uh, when I started this, I know I could have finished this up in one day. Well, that's it. That's all I got for today. Thanks for hanging out here. And, uh, you know, I hope you got something. I know it doesn't look like we actually completed it, but it's complete. You know, on the next episode, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, get started on the front sheet metal. There's, uh, there's definitely some work that needs to be done up there. But until the next one, I'll just see you around.